leadership is always a contentious uh, affair, especially here in Nigeria. Um, a lot of blame keeps getting dumped on leadership, even when we should also look at the kind of followership that leads up to that, that leadership. After all, today's leader was yesterday's follower. Where do we go from here? What are the roles of critical thinking and visioning in, in developing a country, in ensuring that a country gets on the development trajectory? That's what we'll be looking at today. And what is critical thinking? Basically, it's about having an open mind to absorb information to make a decision without much bias, in fact, without any bias. Uh, however, and what I've noticed personally is that many of us in Nigeria, we operate at the level of many uh, biases, you call it cognitive biases, call it cognitive dissonance in psychology. There are many things we believe that we've always believed to be the case without interrogating those issues. And those things form the basis of many decisions that we take as a people. Perhaps this has culminated in taking very wrong decisions, maybe in choosing leadership or maybe in operational affairs on a daily basis, whether in the public and private sector. What are the roles of critical thinking? What are the roles of, of visioning? Who should have the vision? Is it only the political leaders that should have vision to de decide where a country should be going or where society should be going? Or what other leadership levels should also come on board with their vision? And how do this collective vision of a people translate into the greatness of a country? These are uh, what we're going to be discussing today. And we have with us Mr. Jide Aribisala, uh, Management Consultant by Excellence. Uh, he's been here before. This is the second time on the show. Welcome, Jide. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much for right. inviting me. So, I mean, me. I've, I've provided a, um, a background to the discussion today, critical thinking on one side, you know, the need for us to be able to interrogate our affairs, to channel where we need to go, to interrogate our society and all of that. Uh, and of course, the issue of visioning as well, you know, who should have the vision and all of that. Perhaps let's start with the idea of critical thinking and, you know, which way forward for us as a people. Well, what are your ideas regarding this? Is it only a case for um, political leadership or how else could people who are not in political leadership also form part of the, um, if you like, the mosaic of ideas that take Nigeria forward? Uh, all right, thank you very much. Uh, the word critical thinking, it's a component of two words, critical and thinking. Now, when you bring out thinking, what is thinking? Thinking is a biological activity done by all human beings. We all think, all human beings, regardless of your social class and st uh, status. But the problem is that all those kind of thinkings are biased. Mm -hmm. They are not, uh, they're not done well. They are not, they're partial. So that is why critical thinking is all about a structured way of reasoning. Now, let's look at thinking. What is thinking? Thinking is processing thoughts. Now, critical thinking is a, is a small, skillfully or structured way of processing thoughts. So, you do, though we all think as human beings, but we, our thinking, the quality of our thinking are not the same. Mm. So, you don't leave that to chance. You have to teach people mm. how to think in a more structured way so that the outputs of what they are going to bring out is, is better defined. So that is critical thinking. I'm uh, putting it in a layman's grammar. Critical thinking is a more structured way of processing thoughts. Okay. Now, how does this, what role does this play in our personal life and in our society? Number one, it drives innovation. Mm. Now, when you begin to think differently, you begin to ask different questions. And when you begin to ask different questions, it pushes you to a new reality. I, I'm going to give an instance. Now, so a, a man was at one point seated, and he saw an apple fell. And it was like, why did this apple drop and not going up and not going sideways? Yeah. And that same journey was what led to the giving of the laws of motion. So critical thinking is when an individual begins to question things around him. Why is this like this? Why is this not like this? And then it helps to drive innovation. And number two, it helps to also help to drive productivity. Now there's a difference between effort and result. Now a lot of, a lot of people celebrate effort, but critical thinkers celebrate result. They're quite 
you know, uh, wide apart. Though effort leads to result, but effort is not the same thing as result. So critical thinking is to know that, okay, is this an effort or this, is this a result? And then you need to know that movement is different from progress. Mm -hmm. So critical thinking is, 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 is the tool, is, is, I'll put it, it's the apprentice system installed in an individual that helps you to be able to remove the shaft from the width so that you major on the major. Two things. And, Two things I want to ask. Number one, and these are very uh, strong uh, contentions. Number one, how do we drive critical thinking? Who drives it in society? Those who know it, how do they begin to talk to more and more people? Number one. Number two, which is very contentious, is that um, perhaps there will be opponents to critical thinking who believe that maybe it will get people to stop thinking about religion or to start questioning aspects of religion, things that are not, are not only religion, equally culture, um, that, that things that have been raised with. How do we strike that balance uh, in order to achieve development? People can still be religious, and you are religious, for example, you know, and, you know, I mean, of course, have their faith, and still be critical thinkers to improve society and to be better, you know, for example, someone that does something that is um, you know, inimical to societal progress um, is, is not perhaps thinking critically because if you were thinking critically when you act in a way that damages society at large, you know, it's also going to come back to you and your children. So you're in charge of um, public funds, you decide to embezzle it, you know, uh, you see public property, you damage it. You damage public property that you're probably still going to use yourself or need at some point. That's not critical thinking because you are critically thinking. You will know that this is also going to come back and hurt you. So uh, how do we go ahead in, in all of this, uh, uh, um, if you like, uh, 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 quagmire? I think I'll start with the issue of education. How do you, how do you make critical thinking um, mainstream? Yeah. I think it starts from our educational system. Our educational system should be designed in such a way that we force people to think. Now, um, there was a guy that was saying education is, it was putting an uh, analogy between education being a fire, a lamp, or a container. Now, I, I define that. A container in the sense that you just keep putting knowledge in there. Mm. Oh, A for Apple, B for you, just mm. as a storage. Yeah. Or education as a way of light that you ignite something and it creates illumination for people. Yeah. So I, I think our, our curriculum has a role to play in trying to mainstream critical thinking. Hmm. Like I said in our last um, appearance, I said when somebody goes to school, what, what are they going there to do? Now, when you when you get to you acquire the basics, you know, secondary, primary school, secondary school, and then. You get to a point, you need all those things that you have acquired, you need to start deploying them. You need to start manipulating facts. Now, the word manipulating here, manipulation here is not negative. Now, it's, it's facts. How do you interpolate them, cross-breed them to bring new reality? Yeah. So it has to be a, 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 a deliberate action for a country that, as in primary school, a child must be taught how to think. In secondary school, a child must be taught how to think. In university, a child must be taught how to think. Remember um, what, uh, uh, what uh, Albert Einstein said. He said, education is primarily teaching people how to think, mm. not just acquiring data and storage. No, you must teach people how to think, to process thought, because they are, they are, their outputs are things you see. Cameras, ACs, automobiles, aircraft, chairs, these are products of thoughts. Yeah. Now, imagine that uh, nature gave us certain things, but nature didn't give us chairs. Nature brought trees. It was thinking that fell the tree, brought out the chair from the tree. Right. Now, look at the ore. Nature gave us iron ore. Mm -hmm. It's human being thinking that went to the ore and brought uh, um, iron for steel, uh, steel for uh, automobiles. Yeah. Now, the issue is that the guys that did that, what was their thinking? What, was, what, what were they thinking about? You see, when you analyze things that have gone in the past and people that have succeeded, you can be able to form models that can help people come in behind us. So education is a critical role. Education mm. plays a critical mm -hmm. role for us to mainstream critical sure. thinking. Now, the issue of religion, I, right. I, I think 
everybody has something they believe that is faith. Mm -hmm. And faith is different from religion. Okay. Now, religion is totally, uh, uh, it's a man's way of, uh, how, do I, how do I put it? Religion shouldn't stop uh, advancement. It shouldn't stop it development. Should, yeah. It shouldn't. If you believe, it's your belief system, you believe in God, you believe in a, a supreme being, that's fine for you. You have, um, uh, you are free to believe whatever you want to believe, but that should not stop national development. But when you now say religion is now a cog in a way, then it's being, being hijacked by people with ulterior motives. Now, if you see people that everybody has a belief system, okay, I believe in God, I believe in his power, I believe that is fine. How does that translate to injuring uh, civilization and development in an environment. So the issue of religion has just been too hyped for a long time. And the people that are using those religions are people that had ulterior motive. Because if you see people that really believe in what they, in what they believe, it doesn't stop in, in any way. Indeed. Any, as uh, a matter of fact, I think the truth is also that um, many of what we know as science today uh, was de developed, you know, by even the religious people. For example, um, there was what they call the Islamic Revolution, the Islamic era, um, when they went back to the work of the Greeks and they brought out a lot of the works that during the age, the age of what they call the Inquisition, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, those works had been banned, you know, and it was some of these people who brought it out. Where you hear things like, Al-Jabbar, that's Al-Jibra, Al-Karizmi, it's al gorizim Those are the, you know, foundations of science, mathematics, you know, uh, you know, even uh, all sorts of people, Ibn Battuta, Ibn Khaldun, uh, and so on. Equally, the Christians also, uh, on the other side, they were very instrumental up until the time of the Greeks, before the, the law, and later on they picked up from the Islamic, um, Islamic era. But what does, what does um, political leadership have to do with this? Uh, let's look at the other aspect of um, uh, you know, visioning now. Let's look at visioning. Um, who's supposed to have the vision to move a country forward? They say only the politicians, is it only the political leaders? How does vision work? You know, vision, by my own definition, is anything you are inspired, motivated, burdened to do to make life easier for other people. That's my definition of vision. Anything you are inspired, yeah. motivated, mm -hmm. burdened to do mm -hmm. to make life easier for other people. Mm. So vision is totally about others. Is it, is it also something about what you are seeing in a distance or a kind of picture? That you, are, you can paint in your head. Now, now you even see. If others the, the, may not the, see. The, 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 the vision I'm talking about is a verb. Okay. It's, it's you have to do something. Now, when you. There's a difference between um, dreams and vision. Oh, okay. Those things you're talking about, it's their dreams. For okay. example, say you want to have a big house by the lake that is all the doors are automated. That's not a vision, that's a dream. Mm. Now, there's a difference between dreams, vision, and ambition. Mm. And I think I should break them down. Yeah, now, okay, you know what? I, okay. I want you to hold your thoughts. All we'll right. take a quick break uh, for commercials, and then we'll be right back. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, it's a volume of more than 30... Return a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe and... How secure that is? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the... For leading, if you look at England squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at... Welcome back, viewers, and uh, we've been discussing matters of leadership, visioning uh, with uh, Mr. Jide Aribisala. 
So uh, before we left for the break, you know, you were uh, trying to dichotomize between uh, dreams, vision, and ambition. Uh, I think the dichotomy between ambition uh, um, and visioning, it, maybe it's fairly explanatory because some people are just driven by what they want to achieve for themselves. Maybe that is ambition or whatever, uh, you know, as distinct from having a vision that that is about other people where you intend that you know the ideas you have about what could be the possibilities for everybody as against a dream but perhaps you want to expatiate for that uh, you see vision is about others what you want to do for others mm. to make life easier for them mm. that's vision ambition is about yourself okay it's totally about yourself what you want to achieve yourself and yourself and yourself now, dreams are th mental images of what you want to achieve, you know, place in your, you know, in, in your mind. They're abstract, you know. Now, like a defined vision is what do you want to do? You have identified a problem and you want to solve it. That is vision. Now, you, you know, w look at things that have made our life easy. They are product of vision of people. Now, it, it, when and Ford, at one point, having private cars were quite expensive. You know, they were like having a private jet. Mm. And Henry Ford said, oh, I have a vision of seeing multitude, multitudes of people driving cars with a little amount, amount of money. And that was how he started the Model T, um, what's it called, um, Ford. Uh, uh, Ford. And it uh, became accessible to a lot of Americans. And a lot of Americans could now drive automobiles. That was vision. But though he got rewarded, because naturally vision will reward you. But that is not the essence of vision. You found a problem. You find a way of making it, uh, solving it to make life easier. Now, I can mention all things that are useful to us as, today, as human beings today. Mm. They are product of vision. Cameras, AC, mm. automobiles, aircrafts, chairs, yeah. wristwatches, naming. They became product. They were first of all vision, mm. and they were translated from, the, from, from vision into they were translated from vision into products. Now, it gets to a point that vision of an individual must be now converted into either a product or a service. Now, when, when uh, Bill Gates had in, in 1970s, thereabout, when Bill Gates had this vision, what was the vision? Bill Gates said, I have a vision of a laptop, a computer on every desk in every home. That was a vision. Now, what, what did the vision you know, produce? It produced Microsoft. And now see how Microsoft, Microsoft had benefited the whole country. It wasn't the U.S. that had that vision. It was an individual man that had the vision. The issue of Larry Page, the guys that did the Google, it were two guys that had the vision. Now it benefited the whole country. Now you can see that the transformation of a whole country is hinged on the, the aggregate of visions of individuals that are in that space. So if you have oh, yeah. a vision, mm -hmm. I have a vision, everybody has a vision, mm. we go out every day, we are working on that vision, it's just a matter of time, we have a beautiful society. So, but when you have a society where it's full of ambition, ambition, mm. ambition, we are in trouble, we will be in a state it, of Would chaos. you say that is where Nigeria is? The, yes, that is saying. And the, why? I, I don't... And, and how do we get out of this? Now, we need to preach the gospel point. of vision more. Now, mm. I, like I used to do personally, like I used to do personally, I, anywhere I go, I preach the gospel of vision. I ask people, what is your vision? Every young man should have a vision. It's either you are building something or you are a part of building something. Yeah. You shouldn't... Now, unfortunately, we see young people pursuing money. That's, that's the wrong thing to do. Mm. As a young person, money is meant to be a reward for what you have done. Yeah. Now, even thank God you are an economist. Even in basic economics, money is not always the first thing. Mm. It comes after a value has been dispensed, delivery and satisfaction. That's when you get the money. So you don't put the cart before the horse. You put the horse before the cart. Now, a young person should have a vision. Look at guys that are in uh, fintechs. They built a system, and then they got rewarded. 
Money is in abundance everywhere in the world. But money gravitates towards vision. So we need young people to have visions, mm. to run their life. You, okay, you are starting now. You have studied mechanical engineering in school. So what do you want to use the knowledge of mechanical engineering? What problem have you identified that you want to use the money to drive? Mm. Now, the rate we have over 60% of perishable goods in Nigeria. 60% of what is grown in Nigeria is perishable perishes. Now, the issue is that you're studying mechanical engineering. You are studying refrigeration in mechanical engineering. How do you want to use the laws of refrigeration to preserve things in the market? Now, when you have that kind of vision, you know what the laws of refrigeration is, the compressor, the expansion valves, you know how they work by basic laws of electrical engineering. Now, you can now say, okay, can we build preservers in all our markets in Gariki. Take for example, you have a preserver in Gariki market. You have a preserver in Use market. How does it work? It's just a core, it's a core room that you can put your perishables there overnight. When you put banana there, even for its one month, it's just going to be exactly that, as fresh as it is going to be. You put tomato there, it's going to be fresh. You, anything you put there is going to preserve it. Tell me whether you people are not going to buy for pay for that. Now, the mechanical engineering now, you have used this as a vision to drive, to solve a problem in the society. Number one, you will be rewarded for that, and then we'll have a better ecosystem in our society. So you don't just absorb knowledge as, as a storage to keep. It's meant to be deployed for a particular problem. But when you don't have people that have vision, a mechanical engineer goes out and starts looking for a job instead of looking at problems that he can solve mechanically. Mm. Now, if you look at how the aircraft started, Two guys, they were just driven by vision. They, they kept on looking at the boards, flying all the time. And they said, we we will love to also fly like that. And they went to and they went to work. They, it took them 25 years of their lives, their resources, to for us to be able to fly to Dubai in a few hours. Mm. So everybody must be driven by vision. Mm. Everybody more, more must be driven by vision. More and more, more and more of our people should be driven by vision. It could only and, and, and perhaps it doesn't have to do with only the young people. Um, maybe even some of the older people, so that we, we don't make it look like it's just something for young people straight out of school. Um, even old people, like you said, because as you were speaking, I'm imagining myself, I studied economics, and um, I believe that most of my writing, I'm trying to drive towards a vision uh, to say, you know, using my knowledge of economics and what I've read so far, um, this is how I think our economy should be in Nigeria and, and, vision, all, yeah. and all of that. So, yeah, but, uh, but, but what, 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 how do we get this going? And um, what is the role of government in opening up the space um, for our youth, to be, uh, our youth and even older people to be more visionary and to be able to think in terms of collective development for Nigeria? I think the government could incentivize mm -hmm. and vision. Okay. You know, when you, for example, when you incentivize it, it drives people to do it. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to, it's just like uh, the demand and supply. You're trying to force people to do it. And, and then we see things happening around us. Mm -hmm. You see maybe on social media, you see people do creative things. And then governments you pick up from those kind of people. Yeah. All of us cannot be innovators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You understand? That's but we can important. improve on things. Mm -hmm. We can get it better. Mm -hmm. We can move it from zero to one. Let's look at the case of Rwanda, where I understand you were there recently. Yeah. I also was there recently. And I was very surprised. And coming back to Nigeria, um, in fact, my two days that I spent in Rwanda, even though that wasn't my first time, uh, but this time I was able to, I think the last time I was just too busy attending a conference and so on. Uh, this time I moved around a bit, even at night. Uh, one night they had a national, like a national marathon in the night. Um, people were just running on the streets, you know, there was a band and so on. I felt there was a lot of cohesion. Uh, they, have a, they have very strict rules. The president, Paul Kagame, of course gets a lot of criticism from the West lately because um, I think he's been there, they believe he's been there for too long. But, but, it's, it's but, this, resolved, but this gentleman, I think, has been able to, to, to this, create something very tangible for, for his people. people. Uh, discipline is very, very high. In the, you know, it's, of course, it's the neatest country in, in Africa. In Africa, yeah. 60 kilometers speed limit within uh, Kigali, 80% when you're traveling, I mean, 80 kilometers per hour. You can't drink and drive. You, you can't, can't be drunk so and drowned. I, I was shocked at what they've been able to achieve. And of course, the fact that 
foreign investment is pouring into that country because people from abroad, they can come there, they feel very comfortable. It has some of the tightest security. I saw the tightest security at the airport. Of all the airports I've been going through, if you don't make a provision of 30 minutes, because there's a point at which everybody comes out of the car. You have a dog to screened. sleep your bag. So what, what, what do you have to say about that? How a president of a country has been able to foist his vision very strongly. And perhaps is that what we need in Nigeria? You see, the, 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 aunt, the aunt for leadership, even the highest rank in presidency, should be taken more seriously in Nigeria. We don't need politicians, we need leaders. Trust hmm. me. Politicians cannot help us in Nigeria, I tell you. Politician thinks about the next four years, the next four years, hmm. getting into it. Leaders think about transformation. Hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't get into the position of, you know, it's democracy. It has to be on the wings of elections uh, and those kind yeah. of things. Mm. But we don't, politicians cannot help us. The kind of the transformation and development we need in Nigeria is going to be driven by leaders, selfless leaders, people that believe in the people, that these are my people. This is suffering. It's not people that just believe in their self and the pocket and just their immediate so environment, so, so, uh, cronies. Until we have that kind of leaders, that kind of leader that is looking from the pinnacle and is seeing everybody. And, and in Nigeria, regardless of who you are, who you are, where you are born, regardless of your social status, you are in Nigeria and you should be catered for. Until we have that kind of leaders, we are just joking in Nigeria. Now, it's, it's not just um, the, bop, the bam bam moyo, the Yoruba, I'm fine. Yeah, I, 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 I will yeah. interpret that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. see, the, the bam bam moyo is the kind of ideology that has, I'm, I'm fed, I'm okay, I don't care who's hungry. Yeah. Until hunger becomes an issue for all of us. Even when you have food in your store, you think about somebody has nothing to eat. Until our problem become all one person's problem become all our problems. Now look at having 10, 10 mil, over ten million people children out of school. What do you think that will come in the next few years? What 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 are you seeing in some years? Now you are sending your child to good school, being travel driven every day and brought back at home. Even while he was going to school, he's drinking chivita. Now there's another boy of his age on the streets that has no future, nothing, naked, and you think your child will enjoy the same environment with that? You are joking. Mm, so. so the issue is every child in Nigeria must be taken care of, regardless of who was born and where he's born, and his leadership. So we need those. We need the leadership that are going to get there and get everybody must matter. It's not uh, you are a son of this. It is, I don't want to care where you're born. Who, who's your father? But as long as you carry that passport, you're a Nigerian. You are our son and you're our daughter. We must take care of you. Your health must be taken care of. Your education must be taken care of. Your well-being must be taken care of. Now you have a situation where somebody plows a big land of land and it builds an estate there. And somebody has nowhere to sleep. So we, 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 we need think, to be keeping... Uh, Thinking mm. in that line, Thank to have you. a country that, 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 that exactly. That, Thank you very that's much. That's all in. in that, that's a great place to um, end the show for today, and uh, that's so eloquently put. Uh, what I see from all of that is that we have a lot of work to do, and only we Nigerians will do that work. You know, those. That's when they say your work is well cut out for you. That's Nigeria for you. We have those children to deal with. We have educational, health, and other sectors. Housing, we haven't even started at all in those areas. And it is we, through critical thinking, collective vision, and also a leadership, political leadership vision, I believe that we're going to be able to achieve it someday. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, viewers, for listening. It's been a good one with uh, Mr. Ibisala. See you next week.